When I'm choosing plants for my garden, whether that's in my main mixed flower borders or in patio pots, one thing I'm always looking for is plants that provide colour, interest and impact over the longest time possible. Of course there's a place for one hit wonders like peonies that flower looking stunning for just a few weeks before fading, but long lasting colour and interest is my aim. So in this first video of a short series I'm concentrating on long lasting colour and I'll be showing you some of the plants that I grow that both flower and provide colour and interest over many many months. Ones that will repeat flower if you treat them right and I'll show you how. These plants form the cornerstones to many of my garden displays. So if you want to create a garden that looks good throughout the year then these are the plants for you. In this video I'll highlight some of my floral favourites like these beautiful astrantia that are so attractive to bees. And in part two of this series I'll introduce you to a few of the plants I value for their colourful foliage and striking form. Plants that have real presence and impact. Some just adding colour and interest with their leaves over many many months and others flowering too which is a real bonus and some look good all year round to provide 12 months of interest and colour. There's the variegated yucca I grow in patio pots, a striking ornamental grass to add height to your displays, plus a golden leafed Japanese maple that started in a pot but I've now planted that in a permanent home in my border. So once you've watched this video do search out this companion video to watch and find out even more. Coming up in this video I'll introduce you to the impressive Rose Q Gardens that grows into a bold flowering shrub and this is a rose with no thorns at all. A lovely buddleia that attracts butterflies like no other plant I know and one of my all time summer and autumn favourites that just flowers and flowers. So let's get started with a long blooming summer flower I've only just discovered and which I grow to layer on extra colour through the summer months. One thing I'm always looking for when I'm out and about around the garden is opportunities to layer on extra colour and I've done it here by taking this lovely evergreen holly which will have some berries later in the year but provides some structure throughout the year and at the base of it planting this lovely perennial sweet pea. I raised this from seed, planted it at the bottom of the holly hedge or the holly shrub I've got here and I've just let it scramble up and scramble over and you can see these perennial sweet peas put on many many yards of growth through the course of the year and it's grown up. I planted it actually last year and this year it's really come into its own. Laying on these shoots each of which is carrying dozens and dozens of flower heads of beautiful pink blooms and because the stems grow longer and longer as we go through the season it produces more and more flowers. So the flowering season just continues and we're now through into August and I've had flowers on this sweet pea for many many weeks already. You could just look over here how I've got flowers and I've got the new shoot getting longer and longer producing more flowers which are going to go on going right the way through August and hopefully into September. It's put on a massive amount of growth and just adds that extra overcoat of colour. The holly itself, yes of course it's a very attractive variegated leaf but it really is enhanced by putting this extra layer of colour on. So if you've got an opportunity around your garden to plant something like the perennial sweet pea, perhaps some evergreen shrubs or some hedging or topiary, consider doing this. They're very easy to grow from seed, sown in the spring, grow the plants on. They take a little while to establish and I found it in the second year it really has romped away to put on the most magnificent flowering performance. Don't forget dahlias for long lasting colour either. 
either for displays in pots and containers or to cut and bring indoors as cut flowers. So many varieties of dahlia are available. I won't cover them all now. I've mentioned others in some of my other videos, but this one is Pink Princess. I've had it uh, for a few years now. I grow it in a large patio pot. I will bring this pot into my greenhouse for the winter. I don't heat my greenhouse. I'll just let the top die down naturally and leave the dahlia tuber in the pot, knock it out in the spring, clean off the compost, replant it. But these are wonderful plants to have if you want a long season of colour in your garden. You can find dahlias will be starting to flower probably even as early as July. Certainly this variety was blooming early, giving you flowers through July, August, now into September. And this will keep going right up until frost will nobble it and kill off the top. So if we do get a mild autumn, this can keep going even longer. But if you're in a cold area, then those first frosts of autumn will probably be the kiss of death to your dahlias. Lots of varieties to choose from. You can get short compact ones, got one here which is just a nice little dwarf one so there's lots of different varieties you can get for growing in pots and containers on your patio the main thing to do is to make sure you dead head regularly cut off the dead flowers don't let the uh, flowers go to seed and you will keep the color going give you that continuity through regular dead heading is essential it will encourage further flowers to develop from further down the plant and so you can keep a display like this going right the way through the year and the nice thing about dahlia tubers if you can possibly give them that winter protection is you can replant them the tuber will be even bigger next year and give you another flowering display so great value for money because you buy them once and you can get several years of color out of that single purchase my buddleia seems to be flowering even earlier this year. Normally I'd expect it to be flowering as we go through July, but I'm just through towards the end of June and I'm already getting some beautiful flower heads on this buddleia nanoensis, or sometimes called nano blue. Produces a lovely succession of blooms. First flowers are coming out. I'll enjoy these spikes. Then you've got the new flowers below so I can cut this one out once it's finished flowering and I'll enjoy the secondary flowers below and once this whole thing has flowered I will prune back cut off the whole of the stem and these side shoots lower down will develop a succession of flowers to go into autumn so the key thing to keep the display looking good is to deadhead off for of the old and encourage the side shoots lower down the stems to grow out and carry flowers through from high summer well into autumn. It's always a pleasure sharing my hints, tips, ideas and advice with everyone. So please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right away and subscribe to my gardening channel. There's plenty more videos on my channel for you to enjoy too. Astrantes are another lovely hardy perennial to add to your flower borders. This is Astrantia Roma and it has a common name of Hattie's Pincushion. I think you can see why. These little flowers look as if they're covered with pins, hence the common name. These form nice bold clumps too, and they'll spread nicely in your borders and being fully hardy, come back every year. And uh, Astrantes are available in lots of different colors too. So you can go from deep, almost blood colored variety, like Hadspun's blood, white ones and even ones with variegated leaves. So check out the Astrantias and maybe add these to contrast with other plants in your flowering borders. Astrantia do like a moist soil, especially until they're well established. So make sure you dig in plenty of organic matter at planting time and mulch around plants in winter too. Regular watering is essential during the first year to ensure plants root deep and wide into the surrounding soil to get established. They also grow better in partial shade or where they get dappled shade from a tree at the height of the day rather than in an open site in full hot sun. However, I'm told that some of the darker coloured flower varieties like claret do produce richer, 
deeper coloured flowers when they're growing in a sunnier position and the colours of varieties can be more muted if you grow them in the shade. I haven't tried this myself so if you've got experience with these varieties please leave a comment to share your experience. Established clumps can be lifted and divided if they get too big and on my heavy soil I find early spring the best time to do this so plants start growing away quickly as the weather warms up through spring. I've also noticed that these replanted clumps don't tend to flower well if at all in the first year after replanting. They just start growing and getting established into leafy clumps but they will start flowering as normal the following year. Flowering usually starts around June and plants look lovely for several weeks attracting bees to feed from these dainty pincushion shaped flowers too. They provide colour and interest over a really long period which is one reason I place them in my flower borders. If you are a keen flower arranger then Astrantia flowers can be cut and dried so you can use these in your indoor flower arrangements. There are lots of different named varieties available too, usually of Astrantia major, like this lovely white star with green tips to each of its petals. So if they take your fancy, do some research to find a suitable variety or two for your garden. Flowers fade gracefully and can look attractive and structural as the colour fades away and they turn brown. I sometimes just leave these in the borders to provide interest through from summer through autumn. However, you can cut plants back after flowering in June to July, pruning down the flower stems to their base and even snipping off some of the untidy foliage too. This encourages new growth from the base that carries a further flush of fresh flowers later in the year. In winter you can cut all this top growth down to soil level which is what I do in my flower borders. Then I sprinkle over a generous layer of compost as a mulch to feed the soil which in turn breaks down to feed the plants. And these hardy perennials will grow back in spring and flower again through the summer to put on another glorious show. And I think their common name of master wort derives from their use by herbalists as a bit of a cure-all, while astrantia may derive from the Greek word astron, meaning star. Pineapple lilies are my go-to flowering bulb when I'm looking for a long season of interest on my patio. My Eucomis sparkling burgundy forms flower spikes up to around two and a half to three foot tall and each flower spike carries dozens and dozens of small star-shaped flowers which start opening through July and into August. But as the flowers fade and get pollinated they form quite striking seed heads as a tiny seed pod at the base of each flower swells. As the season progresses through September and into October each seed pod continues to grow and swell changing colour from green to purple and these bold spikes produce a bold and impressive display right through autumn. Adventurous gardeners might let these seed heads mature to save the seed and grow new plants but I've never had the patience to do this and in any case my Eucomis bulbs divide and multiply naturally each year to produce new bulbs which can be potted up separately in spring to produce new pots of flowers. Now these large flower heads can get quite heavy as they develop so it's certainly worth giving your plants some support. So I usually push a short cane down into the pot next to each bulb around the edge of the pot to tie in the flower spikes as they grow. If you don't then the spikes can gradually start leaning and then they curve upwards like a swan's neck as they forge up towards the light like here on this Eucomis Indian summer which can look quite attractive but there's always the risk that they'll bend and break. Just take a closer look at these tiny little flowers which have a thick slightly waxy appearance. Six petals forming like a star around its centre, each with delicate pink colouring and a prominent little stamen covered with pollen growing up from the base of each one. They're really quite magical. 
If you're looking for eucomis, then you can sometimes find pots of bulbs in flower in garden centres in summer, but the best range of varieties will be available as dormant bulbs from mail order nurseries, ready to buy through winter and spring. Just five or so bulbs planted in a pot will produce a lovely flowering feature for any sunny patio. For long lasting colour, it's hard to beat Geranium Roseanne. A lovely spreading hardy perennial crane spill with large cup shaped lavender blue flowers, each with a white centre and dark veins running out from the centre almost to the edge of each of the five petals. Flowers are large too, up to two inches or five centimetres across. And I really mean long lasting, as Roseanne can start flowering in around June in my garden and continue well through October, or until frost brings a display to an end later in autumn. My garden is in plant hardness zone 8, with warm dry summers and cold, usually wet winters. Like all hardy geraniums, Roseanne will die down completely in winter when it can be cut right back to soil level and lovely fresh new leaves develop quickly through spring. By early April you'll have a bold mound of new growth, perhaps a foot or so high, and the flowers start opening at the tips of these shoots as we move into June. Geranium Roseanne is low growing and spreads out almost like ground cover. So I'd recommend planting it at the front of a border, perhaps next to a path or a patio so it can spill over as it flowers. If you plant it at the front of a border by a lawn, then you risk it growing out and smothering the grass, killing the lawn. By the end of the season, Roseanne will have put on quite a lot of growth, but if you ever feel it's spread out too far, then just clip it back to keep it within bounds. Geranium Roseanne is a perfect hardy perennial for attracting bees and beneficial insects like hoverflies too, flowering over a long period throughout the summer and autumn to provide them with food month after month. Some people describe Roseanne rather unkindly, I think, as a filler plant as it spreads out as it grows to fill in gaps between neighbouring plants and it blends in to create lovely combinations with its partners. However, do take this on board when choosing its neighbours, as Roseanne does best when it's given the space to flourish, so any meek and mild neighbouring plants may struggle to stand up to a more dominant neighbour. With that said, Roseanne really is a superb hardy geranium that everyone should find space for in their garden. I wouldn't be without it. This is Kew Gardens, one of David Austin's English shrub roses. And this is what they mean when they talk about repeat flowering performance. Kew Gardens will flower almost continually through the summer, right the way through into autumn. I'm here in the middle of September now, and I've got some, uh, some roses in full flower, masses of buds still to come, some flowers over which need to be dead deadheaded, but the continuity of blooming through the year from Kew Gardens is absolutely superb. When the flowers first start developing, they've almost got a, an apricot colour to them, and as the petals open to reveal these beautiful single flowers, the petals become whiter, but the centre boss of stamens stays fresh and golden and beautiful. And for continuity it's prompt a dead heading which is so important when flowers are over just find these faded flowers follow the stem back and cut off just above the first or second leaf down the stem so these flowers are over they've finished follow that back down got a leaf another leaf another leaf so just cut just above the next leaf down trim off the dead flowers and hopefully that will encourage new shoots to develop like we've got here. Prune the old flowering stem off and then in the axial of that leaf where the leaf joins onto the main stem got a new shoot growing up. 
And another thing which is nice about Kew Gardens is that the stems of this rose are almost thornless. Can't find any thorns on, on these at all. So very easy to grow, very easy to prune. No thorns down these main stems at all. So really attractive in so many ways. And in fact, in the winter, when I give these roses their winter prune and shorten these great big tall stems down, I take some of these sections of rose, uh, which grew this year, and prepare these to take hardwood cuttings. You can just take a section of stem like this, cut it below a leaf node at the bottom, above a leaf node at the top, push that into the ground and propagate new Kew Garden roses from hardwood cuttings. Hydrangeas are one of my favourite flowering garden shrubs and I've got several growing in my garden in large patio pots planted in loam based compost, in a raised ericaceous bed between a camellia and a rhododendron and also in my borders. There are dozens of different varieties and species available, but I'm particularly fond of the summer flowering hydrangea macrophylla varieties, which comprise of two groups, which go by the names of mophead and lace cap. Most of these varieties carry their flowers at the top of the stems that were produced last year, or on short side shoots developing from the older wood that developed in previous years. One of my favorite lace caps is Zorro which has dark, almost black stems and leaf stalks and beautiful blue flowers. And for a white mop head hydrangea, I'd recommend Madame Emile Moulier, that's received the RHS Award of Garden Merit. In fact, I've had my plant for over 30 years now and it's still growing strong. Her flower heads are creamy white in color, opening to pure white and then fading with a pink tinge. And if you look very closely at the eye, at the center of each individual flower, it will be either blue if you garden on an acid soil or pink if your soil is alkaline. Of course, you'll be choosing hydrangeas for their flower color and they come in all sorts of shades of pink and red, white and more. Look out for varieties like Deep Purple Dance or the striking hydrangea Red Angel. Their flower head shapes and forms vary tremendously too, like the enchanting hydrangea macrophylla Hoveria Elair Anniversary, or the dramatic flower display of fireworks. These exploding heads of flower look really magical. Another favorite I grow in a large pot is Missouri which has colorful purple leaves and unusual double flowers. This hydrangea really steals the show on my patio when it's in full flower through summer. And when you hear people advising you to leave these old flower heads in place through winter and into spring, the reason is that they provide frost protection to new growth buds developing lower down on the stems. These old flower heads capture the frost so they hopefully prevent it from penetrating deep down into the hydrangea to reach those buds. But once the risk of heavy night frosts has passed, as we move through spring, these can be pruned away to provide space for the new shoots to develop, tidying or display, shaping up the shrubs ready for the new year ahead. Begonias also bloom well for me in the shade. I grew this hanging basket of begonia sunset shades on the back wall of my house where it was in full shade until really late in the day and it loved it. With the shade and protection of the house, it kept flowering repeatedly right through summer until the end of autumn, quite outstanding. Look out for begonia glowing embers with glowing orange flowers and bold veined leaves. Or how about begonia illumination golden pick a tea for real impact from your patio displays. The mocha begonias like mocha yellow have also bloomed continually for me in troughs and baskets and there are other colours in the range too including red and mocha white. The non-stop range of begonias have been round for a while and are great performers 
really living up to their name non-stop by producing a succession of new flowers to keep their displays going month after month. How about begonia non-stop yellow for something to really shine out on a shady patio? But there are colours to suit every colour scheme, including non-stop dark rose that I planted in one of my hanging baskets. But you do need to go on providing them with attention until the frosts finally bring the display to an end. And deadheading is one of those things just to do every few days. Just go over the plants and if you find any faded blooms you can just sort of pick those off just snap those off earlier further down into the plant itself just remove any old petals and things you see just to keep the display looking its best you might also see the seed heads developing on them so these can be picked off too so just go over the plants pick off anything that fades and leave these other flowers to develop and of course in addition to deadheading, watering. Just baskets will need water. I can usually tell just by lifting the basket at the base, see how heavy it is, but just make sure you give it plenty of water to keep this display going. I won't need to feed because I mix some slow release fertilizer into the compost of planting time, but just give them a really, really good drench of water every few days. Now, one family of plants that I'm sure you will find a favourite from to grow in your own garden are fuchsias. And there are dozens and dozens, hundreds of different varieties to choose from. Hardy ones like this fuchsia beacon, or tender ones, trailing varieties you can put into hanging baskets, upright ones that you can put into patio pots. But I do like the hardy ones. You could grow them in your garden. I like them in pots because I can provide these a little bit of extra shelter during the winter. They should be perfectly hardy in most parts of the, uh, the country, but the top growth will get knocked back in the winter and you have to prune off those, all those woody stems and wait for the new growth to come from the base. In the patio pot, I did that in the spring. The old woody growth from last year, because this plant has been in a pot for a couple of years now. So those old woody shoots that got through winter, I pruned back. I had new green shoots at the base. They grew up and it's produced a lovely plant. But the thing you must do with fuchsias is to pinch them. Whether you've got new plants from the garden center or you've got an overwintered plant, when you get new shoots developing, wait till they've got two or three or four pairs of leaves on the stem, pinch out the tip of that shoot. That encourages the side shoots from lower down to grow up. And once those shoots have got perhaps two pairs, three pairs or four pairs of leaves, you pinch the tips of those out as well. And that starts giving you a beautiful bushy branched structure to your fuchsias. Now the pinching will delay flowering because by pinching out the tip of the shoot, that's where the fuchsia is making its flowers. So pinching is a job to do from early in the year through April, May and perhaps early June to develop the structure of your fuchsia. After that, hands off, let those shoots develop and produce flowers. And like my fuchsia beacon, it will be flowering through probably June, July, August. I'm now through to the middle of September. This will go on going for a good few weeks now before the frost finishes off this display. But a pot like this can be overwintered and it produces an even bigger plant for next year. So over the years, the fuchsia will get bigger and bolder. I always take some cuttings too. Propagating fuchsias is very easy and it's a great safety precaution. By having some cuttings in reserve, if your parent plant gives up the ghost, you've got some new plants to replace it. And also, of course, if you take some cuttings of your favourite fuchsias, you've got something to give away to your family and friends too. So take cuttings earlier in the year, probably around about April, May time. Some of those new growths, <clears throat> before you pinch them out, the tip of the shoot, which you're going to pinch out, you can use as a cutting. You can propagate a new plant from it. So let the shoot get a little bit longer. Take out a shoot tip, perhaps three inches or so long. Prepare that as a cutting. And then that will root and give you some new plants, which will grow on through the season. And you can overwinter those as well and use those to improve and increase the uh, range of varieties that you've got. And perhaps if one of your friends has got a fuchsia that has caught your eye, you could ask if you could just take one of those shoots in the spring, root it in some compost and propagate your own plant. 
Now most fuchsias like fuchsia beacon are really free flowering. They need very little care and attention other than when the flowers have faded. We've got some here. As soon as the flowers have faded you just literally have to pinch off those faded flowers. And the other thing to do, I have been over this plant already, but if you leave any of those flowers in place, sometimes they can form little baby fruits. They are edible fuchsia fruits. Um, some varieties produce bigger fruits than others, but pick those off. You don't want the plant to waste energy forming those little seed heads. Pick, uh, pick all of those off, tidy up the display, and with a little bit of care and attention, you can keep your fuchsias blooming for month after month. I think they provide extremely good value for money, especially hardy varieties, because you'll have your money's worth over many, many years. Propagate your own plants, raise some new plants for free. Tremendous value and something I would highly recommend. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll find lots more planting suggestions in another video I've produced called 15 Perennials every garden should have. It includes the long flowering alstroemerias like Havana and a beautiful pink sunshine, the magnificent tall and golden Rabbecker Herbston, striking hardy perennial Salvia Amistad that flowers for months and months right up into November, and the wonderful clump forming sedum, I think are perfect for planting along the front of a border or even along a path. So check out this video for more details about these and many other plants in my top 15 favourite hardy perennials. And there are lots more videos on my channel at Adams Gardening Guides. So tune in soon and enjoy more of my gardening videos. Thanks for watching.